for your word, oh God. God, we don't want to be, oh God, hallelujah, God, closely aligned to your world, oh God. But God, we want to be hid in you, Jesus. For you, oh God, you, oh God, you, oh God, hallelujah, Jesus, are the answer for the world today, God. You are the only, only, only one, oh God, that can hear our faintest cry and that can answer by and by. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Oh, God, and we lift you up. God, we magnify your name, oh, Father. Hallelujah, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, if we could just stand to our feet and begin to draw our minds in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. begin to lift your hands hallelujah hallelujah just begin to talk to God 
It's been a busy Tuesday, hallelujah. Some of us may not have checked in. Some of us may have got up and immediately started running around, hallelujah. But just take this time right here and talk to him and let him know that you love him. Thank him, hallelujah, for what he's done for you. Thank him, hallelujah, for not giving up on you, hallelujah. Thank him for being so merciful to you, for being so kind to you. And even when you messed up, hallelujah, he began to change after you hallelujah oh god because he thought you were worth saving hallelujah hallelujah he came and cleaned you up hallelujah oh when you were ready to throw in the town he said not so not so hallelujah jesus you thought i was worth saving so you came and changed my life you thought I was worth keeping so you cleaned me up inside you thought I was to die for so you sacrificed your so I can be free, so I can be whole, and I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I can be free, so I can be whole, so I can tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. I will praise you, oh, I'll lift you up, I'll magnify, I'll glorify forever, 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 because I am free, because I am whole, and I will tell everyone Give him a praise for being free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a praise for being free. Hallelujah. There's so many that are bound. Hallelujah. But who the Son sets free? He's free indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to dive into our, our wisdom study tonight. Hallelujah, going further. If you don't have a packet there, I think there are a few left on the on the table. Hallelujah. Who still got that same packet? Okay, so the T is still in the end of the race.
Says so Atia still got her original. Who else still got their original? Who's still in it? Uh-oh, Brother Walter said he's still in it. Says Tia, he's still in it too. He got his? Amen. We are on checkpoint one. We start our, um, our new mission, which is we're dealing with wisdom in our social circles. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Say, Lord, let your word fall on good ground. That means we're ready to receive. So our first scripture is going to be Proverbs, the 13th chapter, verse 20. And before we read it, I want y'all to, to do a little activity. Yeah, like, oh, Lord, here she go. On your paper, on your scrap paper, wherever you're taking notes, I want you to write down who is the wisest in your circle. Just go on. If you don't want to see your paper later or find it on accident, just, just write your initials on the side or something. Who is the wisest in your circle? And then I want you to take a minute and write down three traits that make them wise. So think about your friend circle, family circle. They used to have a commercial. I forget which cell phone company, but you had your Fab Five that you could program into your phone and it'd be unlimited everything. Who is the wisest in your Fab Five? And then three characteristics to describe. I'll give you about one minute. And then we're going to share out some of those traits, not the names. And then we'll go into it. So the question is, who is the wisest in your Fab Five? Character traits of the wisest person in your circle. We don't got no wise people in our circle. We already struggling. They have learned, they've gained knowledge from their circumstance, so they have experience. Would you say? Same thing, okay. Experience, what else are traits? Traits of the wisest person in your circle. Older age, okay, older age, that's good. Hold on to that. Let's get three more. Three more. Elijah, what you have to say? Why is this person in your circle? Give me a character trait. They what? Observe. They observe, so they don't do a lot of talking. Okay, that's good. Who else? Kamora. I know, girl, you didn't, but you just look like you wanted to answer. They listen, right? Don't do a lot of talking, and they listen. Nalea. Rise and shine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we got that they listen. They got a prayer life. They, um, what else did we say? They have experience. Um, they observe, right? Those are wise people. So let's go to Proverbs 13, verse 20. And it reads, who can read it? Who can read it nice and loud? Go ahead, read loud to Kayla. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise, but a companion of fools shall be what? Destroyed. So we, we took the wisest person on our list. Now, that leaves four more in our Fab Five. You didn't put four names that were wise. Something to, talk, to think about as we go through the lesson is, what are the other four people in my circle, right? Do they represent wisdom? 
And then even to add to that, now if you don't have four people in your circle that's wise, that's, that's something to sit back and reflect on and, and ask the Lord to help you to get around people that are wise, right? Because what did, what did the scripture just say, right? He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise, wise all right? He that walketh with stupid people, they're going to be what? Stupid, right? <laughs> he that walks with ignorant people, they're going to be what? Ignorant. ignorant, right? All right? And so this is how this works. And so if you can't think of four or five wise people, all right, don't raise your hand. Just say, Lord, help me to get around wise people, right? And, and, and you know, let's, let's build a circle of people that are wise, right, so that you can be wise, so that you get understanding, better understanding, that we can grow, that we can push each other. And so this is what this is about, y'all, choosing good friends. Everybody say good friends. Not dumb friends, not sneaky friends, not, let me leave that alone. All right, I'm about to get on a tangent, y'all. All right, choose good friends. All right, this is what we want. So we're going to, let's continue on, but I, I, we'll be remiss. All right, y'all, we, we just got to do it. We just got to take a, we got to take a 15 minute, a 15 second celebration break. All right, not a praise break, because now, don't, don't, don't mess this up, all right? This is a 15-second celebration break, all right? My, our brother Jordan came in here. He hype, y'all. He hype. Look at him, look at him, look at him. He came with his trophy. You know, go ahead and hold your trophy up, brother Jordan. Y'all, let's go ahead and celebrate, brother Jordan. You know, they got an a, a, a awesome come-from-behind win. So I can get over here, but but I heard through the grapevine that they came back in the fourth quarter. They were down like eleven points. I left out of there, and and they won the game. How that brother Kobe? Right on. All right, so they. <laughs> They won that game. Congratulations. You know, let's clap it up. Let's make some noise for Brother Jordan, y'all. We celebrate. We celebrate our babies, whatever y'all doing, especially he had it done tonight. And, you know, and they got out of the game and, and got on to the house of the Lord, y'all. You know, so, so, so let's celebrate. Now let's give God a praise, all right, because we know where our hearts are, right? We win a chip, and then we come give God a praise, y'all. This is what it's all about. All right, so this is an awesome time, but we'll get, let's get right back into this. We, we gave 15 seconds, all right? All right, go ahead, Lady Valerie, you good. All right, so then we go um, next to some of those traits of those that are wise um, and those that are not. So if we look at Proverbs 17, 9. more was was right on target it says he that covereth a transgression seeketh love but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends so when we look at that a question to ask remember we we looking through our fab five as we discuss this and as we weigh this are your friends messy uh -oh. is your fab five messy are they led by drama? Does being a friend with them separate you from somebody else? Right? And it says, but he that repeated a matter. So that listening that she was talking about is, is really talking about a confidant, right? When you have friends and you have friends that are close and that are in your circle, you should be able to confide in them and know that that stays where that is. Absolutely. Yeah. You have oh, okay. All right. We're going to James 4 and 4. But I will say, I mean, even with that, <laughs> look out. We are, wisdom seeks to cover each other. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, especially if you're, if you're friends, right? Or if, if people do something to you and they're supposed to be your friend, um, let's show people grace. Everybody say grace. 
All right. How many here ever made mistakes and, and did something wrong to people and, and you treated them, you know, a way that you probably shouldn't have treated them, right? And so, and so because we've done that to people, when people wrong us, let's show them mercy, all right? Let's show them grace. Um, this is what the scripture is talking about, right? Um, where are we at? What verse is that? 17.9. 17, right. He that covers a transgression, right? So we cover each other, right? We don't, we don't necessarily hide it. We don't necessarily try to ignore what somebody does. But some stuff, right, if it's not so detrimental and it's not so grievous, right, some, some, some things we can just cover them. Lord, forgive them. God, help them. And, and we just keep, we just, for the sake of friendship, for the sake of love, right, we, we just move forward, all right? And so this is what it's all about. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to look further. We're going to look at James 4 and 4. Somebody can read. Somebody want to read loudly? Four and four. James four and four. James verse four. Chapter four, verse four. Nobody? All right. You got it. He said adulterers and adulteresses. He, co he covered it there. Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Who knows what that word enmity means? Enmity. Separation. Uh-huh. What else? What'd you say? Enmity. What does that mean? It means hatred, a strong hatred. So when we're friends of the world, right, and we have a friendship, right, that word ship on the end of friend means this continual relationship that you have with the world, right? That is hatred with God, right? You are on the opposite side of God. It says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, again, is enmity of God. So when we choose worldly counsel, when we choose to connect ourselves with worldly things, right, this soul tie type thing, right, we are in opposition of God, right? And along with that, we're going to go to Romans 8 and 7, that piece together, Romans 8 and 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they are in the flesh and cannot please God, right? So when we have these relationships or we have these ties to the world and to worldly things, we are operating out of carnality. Questions, thoughts, y'all. Let's talk about this, y'all. This is so serious. This is something that uh, many battle with. Go ahead, Elder. Grab that mic and read. Disloyal sinners? Uh huh. Flirting with the world and breaking your vow to God. Do you not know? Being the world's friend, loving the things of the world, is being God's enemy. So, whoever chooses to be a friend of the world makes himself an ops. <laughs> You're an ops, y'all, you know, all right? Playing with the world, 
partnering with the world. We are in opposition with God. Disloyal. Disloyal. All right. That sticks out. Disloyal. And so, who wants friends that are disloyal? Nobody. Anybody? Friends that are disloyal. And so that's how God looks at us, right. as as we fall in love with the world and less love with Him. Um, he looks at us as disloyal. So how many how many feel like the blessings of the Lord are going to follow you if you're disloyal, right? It's not happening, right? And so we have to make a make a choice, right? Um, that I don't want to be disloyal to the Lord, right? And so. Um, these are some checks and balances, balances that we all have to have, y'all, uh, and in our own personal time with the Lord. God, do I really love you more than I love this world? Do I really love you more than I love these people, these friends, pleasing my flesh? Do I really love you more than I love clapping back? Do I really love you more than being bitter? Do I really love you more than, you know... Um, just in, indulging in things that are that doesn't bring God glory. We know what that is, y'all. We know what that looks like. And so whatever that is to you, right, and whatever that is to me, we have to check ourselves, right? This is why the Bible says we say it often, right? <laughs> Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Everybody say all. All. So it's all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, right, and all of our strength. And so how many got work to do? How many got some loving on God to do and to grow in, right? We all ought to raise our hands, right, because we, we don't graduate in love for God because we're in the world, right? And so we're striving not to be of the world. And so as, as we're striving to not allow the world, the world to influence us, right, we are growing in our love for God, and, and we should continually grow. And when we stop growing and, and we find ourselves giving our strength to other things, giving our energy to other things, giving our minds, right? Love the Lord thy God with all of thy mind, right? Thy heart, thy soul, thy strength. When we give our mind to other stuff, right? Our strength to other stuff. We give our souls to other, you know, people, places, or things. It's a dangerous place, all right? And um, it, it literally makes us an ops to God. And so it, you, we, we literally cut off our own blessings, right? And so you don't want to be out there like that, none of us. And so we got to make a decision. Um, it's, it's so much better on this side. It's so much, it's, it's, it's so much more joy. Uh, and, and the blessings are, are rich when we make, make the right decision. But it's going to take being around good friends so that you can um, help each other, you know, come higher in God. Go ahead. That's true. And that next verse in Proverbs 17, 17. And it says, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A friend loveth at all times. Not some of the time, not I'm upset with you, I don't like the way you did that. A friend love it at all times, right? There's a, a connection that is there. Proverbs 17, 17. All times. Well, let's talk about it. Have you ever had a time where it was hard to love a friend? What made it hard? Disagreement? Sky? Ooh, that's good. Their actions are repetitive. Okay, what else? What else makes it hard? Being lied on, okay? Dishonesty, what else? What else makes it hard to love a friend at all times? Make it hard to love a friend at all times. <clears throat> that's it. That's it. That's a, that's a good friend. They're going to tell you when you're right. They're going to tell you when you're wrong. A friend loveth at all times. Sometimes that leads to those disagreements like Sister Tia said um, there. Jordan? 
That's right. They tell you what not to do and, and, and what to do. And that's what we're talking about, having wisely counsel around us. That's good. That's good. I mean, I've been here, I mean, have really been a true friend. And, and you said something to a friend, you know they was wrong. It may not have something to do with you, maybe or not, but you, you said something to them, um, and, it, and it checked them, right? Or how many have a friend that, that you're accountable to? I can, that's, a, that's an even better question. How many of you in here have a friend that you're accountable to? That means they can tell you you wrong, you, you tacky, right? You, you wrong, you, you shouldn't do that, you need to, this is what you should do, and you don't be like, girl, boo, or, or do whatever, right? But you actually are accountable, and they can tell you something, and you listen to them. Wave your hands if you, if you got somebody in your life that can check you, right? Everybody, ha everybody has to have an accountability partner, right? And I'm not, and for, for young people, I'm not talking about your parents, right? I'm talking about some friends, like when you about to do something wrong at school or you out in the neighborhood and you know you about to do something or say something and some friend, maybe you that friend, you be like, nah, we ain't doing that, right? Are we not going there? It, somebody need to have some sense, all right? You know, um, when I be going, when I'm working in schools, you know, I get to work with kids and it, it's like sometimes it seems like nobody in the circle have sense. And so we try to help them. Like, somebody got to have some sense. Somebody got to be able to go against the grain and say, nah, we, somebody got to do the right thing. Right? So, so you need to, first of all, y'all need to be that one that can tell somebody to do the right thing, period. Right? Not just telling them to do it, but you, you living it. Right? Look at somebody and say, are you living something? <laughs> All right? So we all got to be living something. And, and then we all got to be accounta uh, accountable to somebody, right? That, that, that uh, accountability partner, y'all, I, I pray they are saved. <laughs> all right? They need to be saved. All right? They need to be trying, striving to walk the right path. All right? Don't be having to be accountable to people who don't believe in God. All right? So let's get us some friends. Let's get us some people in our circle that can help us advance. All right? Go ahead. All right, so we're, yes, Elder Walter. Yes. Yes, you absolutely can. That's facts. If you, if you happen to be the wisest one in your circle and you have to, you, what you have to be careful of is, is that people don't make you a God. So not meaning you're putting yourself before people, but that you're always the one to jump in and to save them, save them per se, from their, from their troubles. You're always the one to do that because sometimes it's God that's trying to deal with people and then we get in the way. So God can't do what he really needs to do for that individual. Can it be tough? Yes, right? Like, but you love these people, right? They could be family, they close friends, people you raised up with, but you can get in the way of what God is trying to do with them by continually being the wisest one, continually jumping in. So you really got to ask God for direction of, okay, God, is this where I insert? Is this where I help? Or is this where I just pray? Sister Tia, you have your hand up? And here's some other wisdom. If you're the wisest person in your circle, you need to get in another upgrade. circle. You need to upgrade into another circle. Because it will cause burnout. It will cause, you know, all the other stuff that we just talked about. I didn't say don't talk to them no more. I didn't say don't be friends with, you know, that particular group. But if you're the wisest person in that circle, you're no longer able to grow. Yeah, yeah. And so and so you have to you have to be able <laughs> to be poured into also. You know, you can't be always the one pouring out, pouring out, pouring out and nobody's ever ever pouring into you. You got to have to have some kind of circle where somebody is refueling you to be able to to pour out. All right? So You you also have to know the difference between a friend and an assignment. 
not meaning that you, there's, there's people that you are assigned to, right, to help lead them to Christ. That doesn't mean that you are to yoke up in a friendship with them. And so it's very important that you don't mistake that assignment for a friendship, right? Because you could, you, God could be using you to help pull somebody on in. And you want to be careful that that, that neg- negative or that influence doesn't pull you the other way. So that's when you really have to ask God for direction. Yeah. I mean, are they an assignment? Are they uh, a season? Right. <laughs> or True. Or is it uh, uh, something lifelong? An or an assignment. Uh, and, and so lifelong friendships are very rare, right? Uh, us, we're getting older. You find out lifelong friendships, you, you don't have 30, 40 lifelong friendships, people where you're just so close to them, right? Some people come and go in different seasons, of your life, and as you grow and advance, and and God moves on your life, God puts you in different circles for that particular purpose to help you grow and, and thrive and whatever He is doing in your life. So um, don't try to hold people for lifelong friendships, and they're really supposed to be an assignment, right? Are they supposed to just be in your life for a season, and you're trying to hold on to folks? And so um, you got to know uh, what is that? What is that phrase? There's too many to hold them and fold them. Look, y'all said, you guys just got to know. You got to know, all right? You got to let the Holy Ghost help us. I think somebody had, you can go first, and I'll let Sister Kimmy. And I think when, when you think about that, like, you have to, and it's something that comes as you as you age and as you have wisdom, like, you got to learn to tell people, too, like, what kind of friend I am, right? Like, I am I love you. I care about you. I'm not going to let you just fall down. I'm not going to let you just go haywire. I'm not going to. So I'm probably not the friend that, that you want to call if you're looking for a certain answer. Like, when you call me, you, you sincerely want to know um, what the Lord has spoke for me to tell you, right? And, and that's what you're going to get. And so you just have to, to be up front about that in the beginning. Just a Kimmy, you had a question or a comment? <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's wisdom, right, at the end of the day. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, ultimately, yeah, um, God is, he's going to be your friend. He, he's that friend that Sticks closer than a brother, right? You sound like Ariel. She's like, I don't got no friend. I got associates. She's like, she's been talking to your, your grandma. Yes, sir. Yeah. You also have to know when when people just aren't listening, right? Like, just shake the dust, move on. It don't mean you have to be mean to them. If they call, you can still talk to them. But but you know who's listening, who's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, and you also have to, um, I guess, when people are in your life, you, like you said, you got to know their roles. You got to know. So you don't you don't take criticism from nobody that you wouldn't take advice from. Right, so if you it, don't receive cri- don't receive criticism from people you wouldn't take advice from, all right, and so and so that'll help you right there when we're dealing with people, right? Because that'll save you some stress and worry and anxiety when they said something about me and they talking about me, they lying on me. Well, they're really not your friends, period, right? I mean, but again, would you take advice from that person? Right. If you ain't taking advice from them, don't let people be all up in your life trying to be your friend and, and whatever. All right. I'm trying to save some people some stress. You can get get some peace in your life. Yes. All right. So we're going over to Proverbs 19. There's a few verses here. Y'all know the answer to everything is in the word of God. He just ta- he just he just tells us everything. It's, just, it's right here. I love it. 
So 19.4 says, wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. I just read that. I was like, that is so true. When you got money, you got all the friends. People start calling for, it's tax time. Some people somewhere, they didn't heard from relatives. They ain't heard from in a, in a long time, right? Because they, they got some money. Then go down to six and seven. It gets even deeper. It says, many will entreat the favor of the prince. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Right? When people start giving gifts, right? And you got to be careful about them gifts. Because sometimes people are giving you gifts as a form of manipulation. Right? Or they're giving you gifts as a, as, as a form of something else. Some people want things in return when they give gifts. Right? And so it's so true. Then it says, all the, bre- all the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. So they, they ignore those that are poor, right? But they want to be friends with those who have, have money or have, they think have things that are going on. All the answers are in the book. Every answer is in the book. Um, moving on over to 27, Proverbs 27 and 5. Here we go. This is what this is what we were talking about, that accountability piece. So we're going to start with 5 and 6. We'll drop down to 9 and 10 and then 14 and 17. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of the enemy of an enemy are deceitful. We're going to 9 and 10. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So does the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Thine own friend and thy father's friends forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is far off. We're dropping to 14. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it should be counted a curse to him. And then 17. Iron sharpeneth his iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Y'all ever seen iron rub against each each other, right? What happens? It sharpens it, but what also happens? What'd you say? It sparks, right? Something ignites, right? So when you have your counsel, when you, you have friends, right, that are sharpening you, what happens? There's a fire, there's a stirring, right? So even if we think about like our church name, we're Circle of Hope Family Life Center. If we're truly being a circle to each other, we're going to begin to light some sparks, right? And we begin to light some sparks, there's going to be a fire that starts burning, right? And once the fire starts burning, right, there's, there's going to be revival. But we got to be prepared, right? We got to learn how to be godly counsel. We got to learn how to have the correct people in the circle. Absolutely. I mean, um, you, you, you start triggering something, Lady Valley. You're talking about this iron sharpening and sparks, y'all. This is why, again, being around um, safe folks, safe folks that desire to move in, in deeper depths in God, y'all, it ought to spark some things just sitting and talking about the word. Um, uh, visions and dreams and purposes are established through through counsel and sharpening and, and as we gather together y'all uh, there there should be some some synergy some things that are just um you know be impressed in our spirits right the, 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 those prophetic impressions ought to be just bubbling up on the inside of us as we are sl- reading the word and and having um you know small group studies y'all this is we're not just doing this just to be reading a word and going through the motions, y'all. We want these sparks to be, to be, you know, uh, just firing off so that God can really manifest himself through us and, 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 and ministries and things can be birthed um, through us. You know, I, I'm waiting for God to give somebody in here a, a, a multi, you, you may not ever be a platform preacher, you may not ever be a, a platform minister, but, but why, why not? Why can't God give somebody in here a multi-million dollar idea, right, and a business model, and, and you go work that ministry. Everybody say, that's a ministry. 
See, that's marketplace ministry. Why can't God give you that kind of thought and you, and you create and establish that business and that model and you take all those resources and, and you don't get stingy and stupid, right? God blessed you and then you close your hand up. No. God will do that so that you can be a blessing and expand kingdom vision. All right? Why not you? Look at somebody and say, why not you? Why not? Why not? All right. God is doing this. God does this all over. Y'all, people, you'd be surprised how many multimillionaires they sow. God drops on their spirit, right? Hey, go sow into that ministry. Go sow 500,000 in that ministry. Go sow 2 million in that ministry. God, God does this stuff all the time. Y'all, you know, we just told y'all, I mean, what, when we were talking, I mean, a couple of months ago, how God can just drop you in, in, in people's spirit and God can bless you to give you stuff and to, and to make things happen and shake in your life, y'all. And, and literally, you know, 45 days later, God did it for us. I'm trying to tell you, right? God, God will put your name and God will come on. God wants to do these things. This is why we got to be around each other. We got to be in prayer meetings together. Y'all, prayer is not to just go through the motions, y'all. Prayer is to sharpen each other and encourage each other to go after God. And so sparks begin to fly and God begin to just drop revelations on us and, and begin to help us to be able to, you know, move forward in kingdom ministry and purpose, y'all. This is why we do this, all right? So, so let's not miss... Let's not miss prayer gatherings. Let's not miss, you know, opportunities to praise him, y'all. When we're praising, praise service is not just to sweat, all right, and burning calories. Praise service is so we can get a hold. When we get a hold of God, we're getting a hold of wisdom. We're getting a hold of, of purpose and all of these things, y'all. And so, and so let's take advantage of these God moments, all right? Let's take advantage of being able to sharpen each other. Um, go ahead. Well, that goes, that goes right back to Psalms 20, I mean, Proverbs 27 and verse 5 that we just opened up with, right? The Bible speaks about open rebuke, all right? So, so don't, don't shy away from open rebuke, rebuke right? Especially um, from leadership and, and then even with friends, good friends. If, you, if there's an open rebuke, Y'all take it, receive it, um, receive it in love. That's why you got to, you know, true friends, you, you'll love, right? Love, love is patient, love is kind, right? And it, it doesn't cause any ill to its neighbor, to our friends. And so when you really have a good friend and you really believe in leadership, if there's an open rebuke, um, um, take it. Right. Ecclesiastics put it like this. I think Ecclesiastics 10 and 10. I was just looking at it. Um, a dull axe requires uh, more strength. 
right? I'm, I'm paraphrasing. That's a different version. But look up, look at Ecclesiastics 10 and 10, right? It speaks about, a, you think about an axe. If an axe is dull and you're trying to chop down a big tree and your axe is dull, how, how, long, you, how long you think it's going to take to chop that tree down? A long time, right? And you're going to waste a whole bunch of energy. How often do we waste a whole bunch of energy trying to figure stuff out, chop, stop, chop principalities and powers down, chopping down, you know, false narratives and thoughts and, and, and you know, you just chopping, using all kind of energy and strength. And, and that, that tree, that stronghold, right, that challenge, that wall ain't going nowhere, Right? Because of a dull axe, it takes too much strength. And so you sharpen that axe, right? We sharpen it. So you start putting that blade, that sharp blade to that tree. Man, it's cutting. <laughs> cutting that thing down, all right? There's some battles. There's some challenges that, that too many of us go through um, that linger way too long. Why? Because our, our axe is dull. That's an Oprah rebuke. All right. If, 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 it's, if, if it's too hard to pray through some things, you've got a dull ex. All right. If we can't get along with our neighbor and our brother and our sister, you got a dull ex. Right. Right. We're trying to force some things. We're trying to make some stuff work, and it's just not happening. The ex is dull. Right. Relationships. We can't get through stuff. Guess there's a dull ex. And so we all have to, we all have to figure out how to sharpen that axe, all right? And so that we can, we can put it to whatever we need to chop down. And, and, it, and it helps, it helps us, all right? So um, a, prayer life, a prayer life will sharpen your axe, right? Uh, meditating, meditating on God's word, hiding it in our hearts will sharpen your axe, all right? Um, being around spiritual people. I know we got to go to work, right? But we don't have to subject ourselves to all the conversations and to all the negativity and the carnality that our friends are, you know, uh, give themselves over to, right? That will dull our acts. If we sit and just be around carnality all day and we don't say nothing, we don't move out the way, we don't shift conversations, right? We are literally dulling out our acts. And you wonder why it's too hard to fight against the adversary. Why it's too hard to get stuff out your mind. Why is it too hard to, to not, uh, to, why is it too easy to, to go into temptations, fall into temptations? Because we don't have a sharpened axe. All right? And so, and so um, y'all, this is for everybody, right? This is, this is key for all of us. Because we're all exerting strength and effort and, and living life. And so our, all of our actions at some point begins to get dull, right? And when you, when you feel it getting dull and it's harder to get a breakthrough, come on, y'all. If you're in church and you can't get a breakthrough, that ax is dull as I'll get out, all right? Because there's no way you can't get a breakthrough, uh, you can't get a breakthrough at church, with music and praise team and everything else and, and, and presence, there's no way you're going to get a breakthrough at home, all right? You can't open your mouth at, pray, at, at church and make a joyful noise at church. A joyful noise will sharpen your axe. All right, y'all here, just get into some more open rebukes, all right? Yeah, I, to say, Pastor loves you. Say, Pastor loves me. All right. I love you all. All right. And so don't don't take it purse. No, nah, just take it. Right. Just take it. Right. Just take it what it is. All right. Um, it, you know, like I said, I said a couple of weeks ago. Right. You you, you want to break through, you know, you got all kind of things you want to break through. But we get to church and we can't even break through with a uh, what a what a praise. But we're trying to break through all kind of stuff and bondage and trials. And we're trying to break through sin and, and, and all these kind of struggles we got. But we, can't, we get to church and we can't even break through 
Everybody lift up your lift up your hands, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now this is what happens. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on out. No, I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating right now with people who, who can't get a breakthrough. Open your mouth and, 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 give and, and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord I, Lord, I thank you. You can't get a breakthrough. God said, praise me with a loud voice. He says, praise me with a loud voice, but we want God to break through our finances, break through all these other things we've been praying for. He says, praise me with a loud voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and the only reason y'all can hear me because I got a mic. We sit here quiet. All right. Cry out unto the Lord. We don't want to be broken. Come on, we can't be broken in the presence. Come on. Come on. How are we going to be broken? Come on. We got to be, we got to allow ourselves to be broken before the presence of God, all right? A broken and a contrite spirit. The Bible speaks about how he will not leave that, that person, that presence, that spirit, right? He will not leave them like that, all right? And so when we come to church, we had to allow ourselves to be broken before a holy God, all right? We ought to allow, all right, uh, God sharpen this axe. God, I got to allow my spirit to be broken before you. How are we going to get healed? How are we going to get delivered if we're never broken, all right? You know what keeps us from being broken? Pride. Pride keeps us from being broken. I'm okay. I'm cool. Look, if we always cool, we in deception. All right? If we always cool and, and ain't nothing ever wrong, we don't, we don't never cry out before the Lord. We don't never need him to help and deliver us. Oh, we are in deception. All right? All right? And so, and so there's a moment, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. All right? Because we are in this body of flesh. All right, and and this flesh sometimes just get to working and 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 getting to discouraging us and getting us in dry dark spaces and 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 I need God, I need you to break me out. Do, you, do y'all ever? Do y'all think pastors? Sometimes I think y'all be thinking pastors. They be like just superhuman, right? And don't ever go through and don't ever have to cry out. Let me tell you, I got to cry out and be on my face. And, and reach for God just as much as y'all. And when I'm telling y'all to lift up y'all voice, I'm really, I'm telling myself. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to get mine. Okay, I'm trying to get after the presence of God. Because I need him to fill me up. I need him to saturate my heart and mind, right? So that I can have a sharpened axe. So that I can, I can fight and stand against the wiles of the devil that comes for me throughout the week. All right. So, so, so look at somebody and say, don't be fake. Yeah. Let's just come to church and be real. All right. And, and, and as we're being real, look at your, look at somebody and say, leave me alone. Right. Don't judge me. Leave me alone. Right. Just let me have my moment. Let me have my breakthrough. Let me have my infilling. Let me have my moment with God. All right. Okay, don't be, don't be trying to figure out what people got going on in their life. Oh, they crying too hard. They must did this. They must, they must be in sin. They must, no, let me have my moment with God. All right, quit trying to figure stuff out. They need to go see the pastor crying that hard. Nah, you need to go see the pastor and cry out because you judgmental and you bitter, right? And your heart ain't right because you always focus on everybody else. Y'all, come on, let me, I don't want to get on, y'all sit me on a tangent, y'all, but look, I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us all be free, okay? We can all be free. We can all be healed and whole, all right? Let me, all right, go ahead. All right, was that a hand? No. All right, we're going to Proverbs 18, 24. Y'all say the Bible answers all things. Y'all said that for y'all turn. She said, we already said that. Said it again. Yeah, the Bible answers all things. 
1824. A man that hath friends must show himself, what's it say? Friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We know that's Jesus. But it tells us to show ourselves what? Friendly, which means we, we can't have the attitude of no new friends. We got to choose wise friends. We can't have the attitude of, I ain't going to look on the left side of the room because I already know. I don't speak to people first. They got to speak to me. Then I say something to them. That, that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures say, show, your, show himself friendly, right? How you going to witness to somebody and you're me? How you going to witness to people when you can't say hello? First, first. Somebody say first. First. Didn't nobody speak to me today. Did you speak to them? Right? Right? Y'all know I got one of my kids. I ain't going to tell who. They started in a new school as they was going to middle school. See, y'all ain't going to know because a couple of them did that. And I was like, you good? You, you know you're going to send a bus? I'm going to sit where I want to sit. And I ain't going to talk to them. I'm just going to sit down. People come to me first. No, that's not what the words say. It say, show yourself what? Friendly. Elder Nehemiah, you had your hand up? <laughs> Friendly. It is. It is. Let me tell you about that. It is. I'm guilty. Repeat what he said. He said, is it, is it, what'd you say? Possible, right? To have an unfriendly, unapproachable face. I'm guilty, y'all. I would be 500%. I get it from my daddy, his face like that. Look at Ariel shaking her head. She said, all my friends immediately say, you me. They gave me a nickname. I didn't even know about it. They call me Big V. <laughs> they, they gave me. And so, so what did I have to learn to do? I'm still working. So y'all know, everybody, I love y'all, right? Sister Valerie loves everybody. But if y'all see my face some kind of way, I could just be thinking about something just real random. But you, you have to learn to, to be friendly, to speak first, to smile, to, to do a little extra when you don't, when you, you know, to, to be approach. That's it. Be approachable, right? Pastor Derek, he's very compact. It's all on his face. People just talk to him all over the place. We could be anywhere in the store. They just walk up and just start talking to him. We laugh as a family. He got friends all over everywhere because he just people just come talk to him. But you just you just have to do a little extra if you have a unapproachable. I won't even just say face, Elder Walter. I'll say like disposition, right? You just kind of like countenance. You gotta like check yourself, especially when you like busy, always running. I'm good for coming in. Y'all might see me come in Bible study and just be like, I'm really just thankful I found the seat, right? But it could come off looking some kind of way. So you just got to be a little extra, but show ourselves friendly. Yes, Kobe. Jesus will, you right, baby. Jesus will help us. He said Jesus will help him. Jesus will Amen. help us. Come on, we ought to, we ought to take Woo! a moment right there. Come on, that's a word. Jesus and and lift up us. your hands and let's give God a praise and say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help hey, me. Hey, that was a moment right there. First Come of on. all, wait, Pastor Derek. He said, Jesus will. Hey, Jesus will help will you. Will help you. He said, Jesus will help you, y'all. Come on. That, that is a out of the mouth of babes. That's a word. That's a whole word right there. Jesus will help you choose good friends. Jesus will help you love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus will help you. Have a right continence. Jesus will help you be merciful and forgive. Gee, that's a whole word, y'all. See, y'all ain't y'all missing this opportunity to tap into God. This is a God moment out of the mouth of a babe. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, y'all. Come on, we're gonna, we're not gonna miss that moment. That is momentum right here, Amen. To tap into where God is leading us. Come on, you do you think who, who do you think prompted a baby to say Jesus will help you? Jesus is here right now, and he's saying, I will help you. Come on, whatever your challenge is, whatever your struggle is, Jesus said, I will help you. Hallelujah. What you can't do for yourself, Jesus said, I'll help you. Come on, we ought to clap our hands and begin to open up our mouths. See, see, if you ain't used to praising God with a loud voice, the prophetic word said, Jesus will help you. I'll help you praise you. I'll help you. Come on. 
But here's what you got to understand. God, I'd rather praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, I'd rather praise you because this is what I want to do. God, I don't want to praise you, to have to praise you through pain. I want to praise you through relationship because, God, you've been so good to me. Come on, lift up our hands and, and let's praise the name of the Lord. Come on, that was a word, y'all. That was a word. That was the word to seal up this whole night. Jesus will help you. Come on, as we lift up our hands and this we're saying right now, Jesus, help me. Come on, whatever it is, just say, Jesus, help me. Help me to be consistent. Help me to be consistent, persistent. Help me, God. Help me, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Come on, let's lift up our voice as we're closing out in prayer right now and praise and worship. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the word, God, to seal everything that we talked about tonight, God. We thank you for encouraging our hearts, God, and assuring us, God, that you are here to help us. You are our refuge and strength. You are a very present help. Hallelujah. You desire to help us. We thank you, God. And our hope and our expectation is in your help. Help us to be strong in the grace of God, even right now. Hallelujah. Let's take this next 60 seconds, y'all. Come on, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about radical kind of praise. Amen. Radical praise that you totally believe that Jesus is helping you right now. He's helping you, God. This is what wisdom is all about. Hallelujah. God said, I want to help you have all the wisdom you need. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Don't miss that, y'all. That, that was a prophetic word. Hallelujah. And a reminder of what God desires to do in our lives. God, we bless you right now. Come on. We, that, we ain't started our 60 seconds yet because we ain't going after him. That ain't radical. That ain't radical. Hallelujah. That praise ain't radical for what God desires to do. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we want you to reveal some things by your spirit, God. Reveal those things, God, that are mind-blowing by your spirit, God. Hallelujah. Help us to walk through doors, hallelujah, that we would have never walked into, God, apart from godly wisdom. Help us right now, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, you will. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we just magnify your name. We thank you. We give you all the honor and all the glory, God, for your faithful hallelujah jesus hallelujah jesus come on the presence of the lord is here come on let's not let's not just blow through this let's not just blow through this hallelujah jesus let's tap in let's tap in in the name of jesus in the name of jesus come on if you're struggling to tap in right now, just repent. Just repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And just be open. Hallelujah for the spirit of the living God to begin to speak to us and to comfort and encourage our hearts. God, we bless you. Hallelujah. Come on. That's it. Come on, people of God. Let's get after him. Let's get after him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's get after him with some, with some, with some desperation. Come on, the wisdom of God is everything. Oh, God, I need you. God, I can't afford not to have your wisdom. I can't afford not to operate in your grace. God, we know it is in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being. God, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, don't fizzle out now. Come on, if you're faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Come on, hey, hallelujah. Come on, we can't, we can't faint in this praise. It's a moment of praise, amen. Come on, if you're praising the spirit, we don't get tired. Come on. Come on, you praise them in the spirit, you don't get tired. We praise them out of our own strength and of our own emotions. Come on, you'll get tired and you'll get unfocused and you're ready to go. But if we begin to praise him in the spirit, this outward man can perish all at once and can get tired. But this inward man keeps stirring up in me. You're stirring up in me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this moment with you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for closing us out. Hallelujah. Oh, God, with the help of the Lord, you are our help. The lifter up of our heads, God, and we, mag we magnify you right now. We love you. 
In the name of Jesus. Everybody say, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you all. For you all have been encouraged tonight as we're tapping in in this wisdom series. Amen. Love you all. In Jesus' name.